Hey guys, thanks for uh, coming out today. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, so here we go, week ten, going out to Iowa City. Huge challenge. Um, you know, so much respect for what Coach Ferentz has done at Iowa over a long period of time, um, and really what they've done lately. I mean. The, you look at their last 15 games, they're 12 and three, and then you look at what they did in, you know, what they've done over the last four years in the month of November. They're 15 and one, which is astounding. So uh, we certainly, you know, going into one of the toughest places to play in America against a, a team that's leading the Big Ten West, seven and two. Uh, we got a big challenge ahead of us. So it's, uh, you know, right back at it every week in the Big Ten, and that's the way we like it. So. We got a lot of work to do between now and Saturday, and then uh, we'll go lay it on the line. Questions? Just going off of that with Iowa's defense, obviously they're one of the top ranked in the nation. I mean, what do they do so well that they're able to con con sustain that and play at that high level? Uh, level? Yeah, they have a they have a philosophy of how to play defense, and they stick to it. Uh, it's not that they don't tweak anything from time to time, but they they know how they want to play. They train their people in their program. You know, they're a developmental program as well. And they develop their players, and they develop them in a system. And they're a lot better at doing it when they're there four years than they are at one year. But they just keep getting better and better. Very much, uh, you know, what we try to do here. Um, so they're very good at it. Coach Parker's been there for a long time, uh, the defensive coordinator. And, uh, you know, there's a reason they're good. Made a lot of history here at Rutgers. Uh, do you still relish the opportunity to make history, accomplish first? I ask because Rutgers has never beaten Iowa, never won at Iowa City. Do you relish the opportunity to maybe make history uh, for this program? Yeah, I don't really look at it as making history. You know, I'm just trying to be 1-0 and this week. And uh, it happens to be that the team that we're trying to be 1-0 and against, we've never beat. But uh, at the end of the week, that's all we all want to do in, in, in our program is be 1-0 and at the end of the week. And uh, certainly a huge challenge, like I said. Uh, I've been to Iowa City a few times to play, um, and it's a really tough place. Coach, um, this is a Rutgers offense that is most improved in the Big Ten in terms of scoring offense and yardage. Uh, what role do you feel the offensive line's improvement plays into that? Well, I think it's, uh, it's huge. I mean, if you just look at it in sheer numbers, the offensive line makes up 5 elevenths of your offensive football team. So. Uh, if they get better, then a large portion of your offense gets better. Uh, but I think we're just kind of moving along, like I've said to you all along. It's a developmental program. We're developing guys. Coach Chirac is new. So uh, some of the things that, uh, that he came and presented when he got here were different for our guys, and they're getting better at it. We just have to go out and have a great week of practice. And we're, we're beat up like everybody else, right? It's, it's week 10 in the Big Ten, and you're beat up. But, you know, it's a matter of who handles it best. And I know Iowa's got injuries. We got injuries. That's that's the way it is right now. Um, just got to go out there and play your best. You see a lot of similarities between Rutgers and Iowa, the way you guys play defense and overall attitude and things like that. Do I see a lot? Um, boy, I hope so. You know, I have not, like I said, I have nothing but great respect for Coach Ferentz and the way that he's built his program uh, over the last 25 years. And um, you know. Had we stayed, had I done the right, made the right decision and stayed here, um, it would be very similar, I think. But we, we didn't. We took a nine-year break, so we're, we're playing catch-up for sure. But uh, I, I do have so much respect for how they play and what they do. And uh, we're just, you know, we're in a spot where we're getting better slowly, and we just got to continue to do that. And uh, will it be enough? We're going to find out here in whatever it is, five days, six days. <laughs> On guys obviously closing in or getting close to a thousand yards. What what do you, message do you think that that sends to kids in high school who maybe aren't highly recruited about what they can become at a high level program and, and in, a, in a you know major yeah I think I think it shows that you know what if you come and you love football and you're willing to pay a price because it's not easy it's really hard but if you're willing to pay the price that you can be successful and be successful at the highest level and Kyle's demonstrated that and, you know it's well chronicled that. He was not the most highly recruited guy, but you know what? He's he's our kind of guy, and he's doing a great job. And I think the whole running back room is doing a great job. 
Saturday, Isaiah Iton, five tackles, stepping in, seeing some more reps. What did you see from his performance and his development? You know, he's he came from Ole Miss. They play a little different style. You know, they're more of a two-gap, three-four team most of the time, at least on early downs. So it's been a transition for Isaiah for sure. Um, he's getting better slowly, and we just keep progressing him. Uh, we play a lot of people, as you know, in the front, so we rotate. And uh, but you know, playing single gap, gap control defense is a lot different than playing two gap. And um, he's learning and getting better at it every week. Coach, uh, common on guy, 500 plus yard games. Uh, each of the last three games, he's eclipsed that mark. Do you feel like he's getting better and, and being more effective as a rusher as the season goes on? I do think he's getting better. I think the line's getting better, the tight ends are getting better, the receivers are getting better, the quarterback's getting better. So I think, you know, it's the old saying, right, all ships rise with the tide. And I think that Kyle is a big part of making that happen, but he's also part of being around other guys that are doing well. So, um, But we're not anywhere close to where we need to be, um, but we are getting better, and that's the key. Gavin has the lowest completion percentage amongst, amongst FBS quarterbacks, qualified 200 dropbacks. Is his inaccuracy holding this offense back? Is it holding it back? No, because I think Gavin does so much to help our offense. Does it have to get better? Absolutely, it has to get better. Um, you know, completions come as a result of protection, correct routes, and then throwing and catching the football. So everybody contributes. But at the end of the day, it goes on whose record? The quarterbacks. Like He gets the completion percentage. The receivers don't. The line doesn't. So, um, And at the end of the day, we need to be more accurate with the ball, for sure. So we're working on it. But like everything else, we're developing. And I'm sure he's going to get better at it. Just out of Reggie Sutton, how is he now that he's a few games back? I mean, how is he continuing to manage that workload? And I guess, how do you balance that during the week of making sure that he's not doing too much, that it's going to set him back? All? Yeah, it's hard. You know. Gratefully, the bye week came at a point where he played and then he got to have a week off. But there's no weeks off now. I mean, it's week after week. So we have to really do a good job, as you said, managing his workload. And uh, he's got to communicate honestly with us, which he does. He's great with that. And we got to, you know, we got to find that happy medium between too much is no good, right? But you got to have enough so you're, you're sharp and can go play at the level. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. But uh, Reggie's, Reggie's a mature guy, and he's helping us with that. We didn't get to ask you about Mayan Anahatu's injury coming off the last game, so I just wanted to check in on that. Yeah, you know, he was not available Saturday. I think he will be available this Saturday, which is uh, good because he's a leader and a big part of our defense. I know you were busy in the first quarter, but uh, they made an announcement about NIL and the Knights of the Raritan uh, mm -hmm. on Saturday. How important has that become as part of your job and just kind of part of the progress and the development of the program, the NIL side of things. Yeah, I mean, it's a game week right now, so I'm going to stick to Iowa, but it's a good question because I didn't see it, but I heard that there was one. It's paramount in what we're doing right now. I mean, that is where college football is, and you have to be able to be competitive in that landscape, and we have to be able to be competitive in that landscape, and it's not going to get less. It's going to only get more. We've had guys that have performed at a high level. Well, you know what? There's going to be people that are trying to get them off our team. That's the facts. And there's going to be guys that we're going to not only want to keep our own guys here, but we're going to want to go out and pursue. And we have to be able to do the things that Big Ten teams do to be competitive and to be able to eventually be champions. So uh, every bit helps, but we need every bit. I always been in a a lot of close, low-scoring games, just the design of how they play on both sides of the ball, the projected same thing to happen this Saturday. When you play in a game like that, is it something, does the margin of error increase even more because the crucial plays are so few, far and few between? Just how, how does low-scoring games, how do you view that? Yeah, I mean, the margin of error in the Big Ten period is very small, right? The margin of error uh, a couple days ago was about as small as it gets, so yeah. But we're used to playing with that. That's that's the only way we play. The margin error is like that. And when you're like a, a team like we are, where you're developing and building and growing, because we're still right in that phase where, where we're developing and growing, you know, you make some mistakes, you don't get it back. You know, I've said it always, there's no such thing as missed opportunities because someone always takes it. And in this case, if we don't take it, Iowa's going to take it. So, yeah, it's that's life in the Big Ten. 
we talked a lot about Kyle Manungai. You've coached a lot of great running backs here in your career. Where does what he's doing this season rank amongst the greatest performances you've seen from a running back? Yeah, I'm going to hold on, you know, kind of comparing him to others because, you know, he still has quite a bit of work left in this season. But I'm very pleased with the way Kyle has performed, the way he's worked. I'm equally as performed the way he leads off the field, you know, the way he handles himself academically. I say it every week, you know, this is an incredibly competitive academic institution. And uh, Kyle serves as not only a great role model how to play football here, but also how to handle your academics. You know, he's a, he's a great student and a guy that's going to be hugely successful in life. And, uh, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, like, these guys are in the thick of it right now. From the back end of midterms, now all of a sudden the, the, the workload is so hard academically that uh, I do get concerned because some days I stand in front of them here early in the morning and uh, you can see they're tired. And it's something that we have to manage. So it's not only the Reggie Suttons of the world, but it's managing the whole workload of the team going into week 10 academically as well as the, the burden they put on their body. So I'm proud of the way they work. Uh, it's part of what you do when you come to Rutgers. But it's, uh, it's all well worth it. Thanks, guys.